Hockey fans, the Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. We're on the air for the next half hour. I'm Kenny Callagher, along with Jerry Burrow. And Jerry, there's a lot to get to, so let's dive right in. Right. North Stars 6, Blackhawks 4, Wild 6, Blackhawks 1, a weekend sweep. Of course, we're talking about the alumni game and then the outdoor game of Minnesota Wild and the Blackhawks. And it was a great, great weekend for hockey great. if you're a Minnesota uh, North Star and Minnesota Wild fan. And let's talk about that alumni game. Uh, you know, there was certainly a lot of uh, uh, press and a lot of uh, uh, leading up to this game. Right. But when they dropped that puck, when I saw the, 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 the jerseys on the ice, I was, I was overwhelmed. You had goosebumps, didn't you? I did. I had goosebumps <laughs> on goosebumps. <laughs> that was a great... It's good to see some of those old players and see some pictures when they had playing days and then see them now. It's just kind of funny. Great introductions. Uh, the NHL did a fantastic job. They got this one right. And uh, there's no doubt about it that uh, Lou Nanny, there was a soundbite from Lou Nanny. He has a pregame speech, kind of like um, Herb Brooks. Yeah. If you lose this game, you'll take it to your grave. <laughs> I don't know if he went to the Herb's Brook, but he said, we're not going to lose this game. He said, this is the last time we're going to play this game. And we're going to win. And they did. They went out and they won 6-4. to four. Uh, Former North Star player Mike Madano said it was good being back in Minnesota. Got a chance to see a lot of God, he looked like he was in shape that he can still play National Hockey League regular here's, hockey. Here's what they should do. They should sign Mike Madonna to a contract and use him, if anything, in overtime games when the Wilds struggle. Oh, three on three. <laughs> yeah. Good idea. There you go. God, you got some great ideas. Well, you know, that's why. <laughs> but again, a great weekend for hockey. It was Hockey Day in America. And it was Hockey Weekend. Uh, well, it's Hockey Day in, in Minnesota every day of the year. Right. At least for us. Oh, yeah. There's so much hockey going on right now with high school sections and college series like uh, UMD was over at North Dakota big series for them and I mean just it's crazy well we'll dive into all of it let's go to that UMD series up in North Dakota back to back two to one losses but that Friday night loss two to one in overtime and North Dakota won it on a penalty shot in overtime I didn't see the play I know that Scott Sandlin was quoted as saying that he wasn't happy with the penalty shot call. He admitted that it probably was a penalty. And I thought, you know, is, is, that, is that a consolation? Should we take something from that? Uh, what, what do you get out of that? Now, his argument is probably he had a good point there. I, I, I saw replays of that. I thought the player got up even with him. It wasn't from behind, you know. So I don't think it was a penalty shot. And I think... Sandlin was right, where it should have been a two-minute, but hey. Are your chances better with a two-minute uh, penalty? No, in, that's a funny thing because I mean, a lot of times the goalie has an advantage, they say, on a penalty shot. Yeah. And so, but in, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's a tough one. Well, but to lose on, when they lose. Coach Sandlin is frustrated like us fans are. Right. And my thought was, just score more goals in that team. That's how you win games. That's easier said than done. North Dakota is <laughs> a good team, and they're really good at home. But I'm going to give the Bulldogs a B plus on this effort up there. They hung with them. They played Both nights. They played well enough to maybe win the games. They weren't blown out, and and that's a little telling. I don't know if this team makes the tournament though. They got to play at St. Cloud this weekend, and uh, St. Cloud might even be a little better than North Dakota. Yeah. Plus. Um... If they don't get the fourth place, they have to go away for the playoffs, and then they got to win the playoffs to get down to Minneapolis at the Target Center for the frozen face-off. And then most likely they're going to have to win win the playoffs series on the weekend before, go to the frozen face-off, and win that to get to the regions. Well, I'm going to go on record as saying that the Minnesota, or rather the UMD Bulldogs, their Achilles heel this season 
And this has been something that I've noticed over the past few seasons. Their, their uh, power play, it's very ineffective. Yeah, I don't know how to fix it either because uh, they got a lot of good players. At... Well, I'll tell you how you fix it. Who are the guys in the power play? Who are Change them? The, take those guys off the ice <laughs> and put five different guys out there <laughs> and find, find something that works because it's not working. It's like the Wild. How, how, in the beginning of the first half of the season, they couldn't score on a power play either. Well, the Wild's a killy heel, and, and we'll see as we go along here, but it's been overtime. They cannot win an overtime right. game, this three-on-three three format. On, no, three-on-three. Three. <laughs> the other team seems to be more skilled on that three-on-three. Three. I think John Torchetti, the new interim coach for the Wild, I think things have changed. Well, we've seen a change, and, and we'll get into more talk on that. And... Uh, I don't know. I just, as a Bulldog fan, I'm frustrated, and I can certainly feel it and hear it in Sandlin's voice and his sound bites, and understandably, because the Bulldogs aren't a bad hockey team. No. I mean, hey, look at They were picked to uh, win their, their conference this year, and they were number two by the coaches' poll in the whole nation. And look where they are. I think they're, they're not even ranked in the pairwise in the top 25 right now. Ooh. No, they are 25. I take it back. They are 25. 25. Well, you got to be in the, the top 20 to... Right. And, again, the Bulldogs will travel to St. Cloud State this weekend. A very tough task. And then the final homestand with Miami of Ohio, March 4th and 5th. And uh, and right now they're tied for... There's three teams, Miami, Nebraska, Omaha, and uh, UMD that are tied for fourth place in the standings. And the top four teams get the home field advantage for the playoffs, the best out of three. So they're going to have to win some of these games. Is that rink up in North Dakota, is that an Olympic-sized rink? That's a regulation. For some reason, it looks different. Does it? I, to me, it did. I always thought, watching it on TV, no. I always thought that was the larger rink. The, the practice rink is an Olympic-sized rink, so in case they go to, a, like, St. Cloud or Colorado. I think Colorado College is Olympic size rink. I've always been uh, confused or, or wondered why the league allows different sized rinks in college hockey. It certainly isn't that way in the NHL. It would be like having a different size court on a basketball for a basketball game. I guess it's home court advantage. <laughs> so I'm not sure why that is even allowed. I don't know. I guess with European hockey, they're all Olympic-sized rinks. It certainly gives an advantage to the home team because that's their rink. Right. And it's kind of the players they recruit, too. If you've got an Olympic-sized rink, you want skaters. You want kids that have skill on skating and shooting and that. Where in a National Hockey League rink, you can get a, some big kids that can check and that and get you know, and they get their goals out in front of the net. Well, that's where the game's going to anyhow. you got to get pucks and players to the net. And teams aren't that don't do that, they're not doing good right now. Well, the Minnesota Wild have started to do that because under Mike Yo, they were, uh, they were crossing the blue line and passing the puck. Now they're crossing yeah. the blue line and they're shooting the puck and they're getting results. And Jerry with wins at Vancouver 5-2 last Monday... A 5-3 to three win at Calgary, and then to complete the Western C Canadian swing, a 5-2 to two win over Edmonton, and then that 6-1 to one win over Chicago in the Sunday outdoor game. Four consecutive wins with five goals or more. First time they've yep. ever done that. In the history of the Wild. That's awesome. amazing. Yeah. And that's what fans like. Fans love scoring. Oh, Yeah. Fighting and scoring, I think. Yeah. <laughs> they took away the fighting, so that's not going to happen yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah. So they might as well do the scoring. <laughs> I love it. And the Wild are on a roll, and I think this is a trend. Now the Wild will play the New York Islanders on Tuesday, and then they'll travel a, a, road, a short road trip to Philadelphia on Thursday and Washington on Friday. Both are 6 o'clock uh, starts, and the next home game after Tuesday is the 28th of February against Florida at XL, 2 o'clock, drop of the puck. Wow. So they got um, three tough games for sure. Well, these three games coming up, Islanders, Washington, Philadelphia, 
this is going to really tell what's going on here right. with this team because these are good teams. And then they come back on Florida is on top of their division still, I think. You know, not that Chicago and Calgary and Vancouver aren't, but I think these three teams, New right. York, Philadelphia, Washington, are a little bit better. Right. And they're road games. Yes. So will the trend continue? Will the five goals a game continue? I hope so. Yeah, three of those teams are in the top ten of the National Hockey League right now. What do you see that's changed? Is it just simply a mindset or is it a different I think, game uh, plan? I think y'all put a lot of pressure on the young kids to perform. And to the veterans, he didn't make changes because they were veterans, so he just let them do what they wanted, basically. And I think uh, Torchetti comes in, and he's uh, he's been great at, over his career in hockey coaching, developing the young kids and teaching them the game and I think it takes a lot of pressure off some of these young kids and he wants a little more wide open offense and he's letting the kids play a little more well, the, where they, they're so systemized before with Yo. so I think that's the difference plus he I think with the veterans if they're not performing I think they're gonna he's gonna take them like you say off the power play or off a line that's hey you're not performing I don't care what you think well he <laughs> is yapping on the bench and he's <laughs> talking to these players and he's giving instructions and advice <laughs> and you gotta wonder that uh, you know we'll see how things go here there's right. quite, quite a bit of hockey left we got the entire month month of March and uh, four games left in April, not to mention the four games left this month. I, I just wonder if, if, if Fletcher has made his mind up or if he's leaning towards Torchetti as being the full-time coach. I think it's going to come down to if they make the playoffs. If they make the playoffs, I think there's a great chance. If they don't make the playoffs, I think they want him backward developing the young kids. I like his style. Right. So I, far. I, I like I like what I've seen. And being that I have a little Italian blood, I love his name. Who? Oh. Torchetti. Torch. So the Minnesota Wild performing very well. That alumni game, former players from the Wild and North Stars skated by an alumni team from the Chicago Blackhawks this past Saturday. Six to four win. Nearly forty thousand fans watched the alumni game, uh, part of the stadium series that the NHL has instituted. And the NHL Wild beat the Chicago Blackhawks on Sunday night in front of more than 50,000 fans. And uh, a great weekend for hockey for the right. Minnesota North Stars. And, of course, the high school game, uh, Duluth East locally won. Uh, Duluth Denfelt lost to Hibbing. And uh, Hermantown <laughs> smoked Greenway 9 to nothing. I thought Herm, Herm, or rather Greenway might have put up a little more of a battle, but... Talk about those uh, high school games. Yeah, and uh, Grand Rapids uh, beat Cloquet. Grand Rapids is the number one seed in the class AA and seven, and they're the team on the beat right now. But uh, well, who do they play next? They play East on Thursday night, and I say get down to the Amsoil Arena if you want to see some great hockey. I think there's a chance there's going to be over six thousand people there. Well, Grand Rapids. Duluth East this Thursday, and I got to tell you, Jerry, I was stunned to see that Duluth East was leading Elk River four to nothing after the first period. Yeah, eight minutes. Eight. It wasn't even half through half through the period. Was there a goal scored within five seconds? No. In that period? No. What happened is that uh, Elk River almost scored in the first fifteen seconds, and then all of a sudden East came back, and then I think it was just over a minute that uh, Ryan Peterson. A kid that um, we thought was not going to play got out there. He had a knee injury from the game before, and they thought his season was over. Well, I, I again, <laughs> and he scores off the board. Throws the really snaps that puck off the board. Off the board. No, not off the board. But he's over on the board. Yeah, by the face uh, face off circle yeah. on the board there, and he just snapped the shot and. Goalie didn't even know what happened. Just went in. So four to nothing in the first period. You would have thought maybe Dave Spihar and Chris Locker were right. on the ice. Well, let's say this. I've been watching East uh, for since '91, so 25 years, and I never seen a better start than that game in regular season playoffs or anything. It was amazing. Now the head coach for Elk River. Gordy Roberts ended up making it down to that outdoor game, that alumni game, and suiting up. And uh, that was neat to see. 
And it, I, when I saw that, I thought, okay, well, he made it down there. He's got some fresh legs. Uh, maybe that'll help this team. <laughs> but uh, Denfeld and Hibbing, uh, did you get to see that game? Yes. It, it was um, Denfeld and Hibbing. Um, a. Lander tried his best, the goalie, River, A. Lander. But uh, Hibbing was just too much um, offense with Perinovich at D there. He had uh, three assists, and I don't I think he got one goal. Perinovich is a UMD recruit. Yes, he's a junior this year, and he's uh, one player that I think is really going to help UMD. There were some upsets, mainly in the metro area. Let's stay close to home, though. Um, so Duluth East, Grand Rapids this Thursday. Hibbing plays... Hermantown on Wednesday night. Both both these games, Wednesday and Thursday, are at Amsoil, 7 o'clock. And, hey, if you're a hockey fan, get down to Amsoil. I'm, I mean, it's just great hockey in the section finals. Well, let's travel south to the metro area. Benilde, undefeated, playing... Uh, Creighton Durham Hall. Yeah, and, and, and you called it. Yeah, last week I said uh, either Blaine and uh, Benil. One, I had them one two in my rankings. Are going to lose this next week, and, and they, they both lost. And they both lost. <laughs> uh, well, let's talk about that Benilde loss. Uh, how devastating is it to a program to go in? Uh, did they take them lightly? Is Creighton really that much better I, than Benilde? Nope, Benilde is that much better. But it's just one of those games where Creighton was in the game and they stayed in the game, and at the end they won. And then the uh, Breck game. Not the Breck, but the Blaine or, game. I'm sorry, Blaine. The Blaine game. Blaine. The reason I, th I thought Blaine might go down, I thought there were two trick pony on that team, two players that do most of the scoring, and if you stop them, you can stop Blaine. That's why I thought they might go down, and that's what they did. Maple Grove is not a very good team, but they have about four or five good players, and I think that they're a year off from being a good team. But... Uh, Hey, <laughs> they did what they have to do. And the other upset I thought in that same section was Anoka and Centennial. Centennial was the number two seed, and they, he, they beat all these teams. They beat East this year, but uh, they played their worst game of the year, and they lost something like 6-2 or something. <laughs> well, why don't, you, Anoka. Uh, why don't you go over the games coming up in high school hockey uh, outside of uh, the Duluth Okay, area. I'm going to go down right down the sections in Class AA. On um, Thursday night, Lakeville North and Farmington. These are the one-two seeds, so that they, they, they were the favorite. Do you smell an upset there, Lakeville North defending champs? Here's the thing. Farmington beat them during the regular season twice. Oh, oh so really? So it's third time the charm, so North wow. can finally beat them. Okay. <laughs> but that's one and two. But Lake, I still like Lakeville North in that one because of all the forwards they have. Numbered. My team all year is in the finals. Eden Prairie versus Prior Lake, and Prior Lake beat Tonka, and they, Tonka's probably the hottest team at the end of the year. Wow, what a matchup. Hockey. Yeah, so those two, and I picked uh, in Prairie in the end of the year to win the whole thing, so who knows? <laughs> Number three, St. Thomas Academy, Burnsville. Burnsville is starting to play pretty good hockey right now, so it's not a givey for St. Thomas Academy. St. Thomas is ranked? They're, they're right about eight. All right. And then um, Stillwater, only one loss this year. They're, they're going to their semis, though. They're not in the finals yet. They still got their semis on uh, Tuesday. They play White Bear and Hill Murray, Woodbury play in the semis. But I think it's going to come out uh, Stillwater and Hill Murray in the finals. So, but I'm going to take Steelwater. I think Hill's a little too young right now. But uh, Hill's been there. You just don't know when the team has good coaching and they've been there before. It's like Duluth East. Good coaching, they've been there before. <laughs> they know how to win. Number five, this is a weird game. Number five AA is Anoka and Maple Grove. Two teams that are not even ranked in the top 20. Well, you know, I saw that and I thought, you know, these are uh, adjoining communities. Um, this is going to be, I think it's going to be well attended. I don't know how often have they played each other in in section finals. Not that often, but the uh, thing is they do play each other and they're in the same conference down there in the Twin Cities, so they play each other a couple times during the regular season. And they'll play on Thursday night their final at Aldrich. 
because the Coliseum, they closed that down. They used to always play at the Coliseum. On, and, and finally, on this night. this final Metro matchup, I think this is one for the well, ages. I looks like I'm going to be down at uh, Mariucci on Wednesday night because uh, the one game is going to be Wazetta in Creighton Durham Hall, who beat uh, number one ranked Benil St. Margaret. And the other game is going to be Eden Prairie Prior Lake. So you get a double header there at Mariucci, and that always packs up a very huge. Wyzetta, Creighton, Durham Hall, uh, this is going to be a battle. Right. And um, Wyzetta, man, they can play real good hockey, and then the next game they'll have a, what happened? Their head's not on? Or? Well, I'm kind of pulling for Wyzetta because they are the Trojans. Ooh, mm -hmm. Blue Central comes oh, back. Yeah. The comeback. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the big game, I think, is Duluth East and Rapids. And anyone that loves hockey and rivalries, they don't like each other. Well, you're saying 6,000 people will be here. I that's, think, about, that's about 90% of Grand Rapids will I be think there. Grand Rapids <laughs> is going to show up because they okay. really think that this is their team All finally right. in 20 years. Well, they're going to This is their best team they had in 20 years. Really? Yes. Bischoff's not on this lineup? Avery Peters. They have a Bischoff. Younger brother. Okay. And then they got a stepbrother, McLaughlin, that's going to the goal first. All right. So they got two. <laughs> well, let's talk about this game. So Grand Rapids and East, uh, do you yeah. have a – I know who your favorite is. I'm just going with the flow where Mike Randolph is 15-1 and one when it comes to section finals. And I recall the one was to, against Cloquet yep. at the Duluth Arena back in 2008 maybe. Yeah, David Brown goal. scored three goals. No, maybe it wasn't four. that? That was the semis. Oh, was that a semi game? This is, this is okay. still okay, but it was about. Did they have to play Anoka? It was I about two, 2001, 2002. Okay, this game. I'm thinking of that game. They with played Croquet okay in the okay. finals. All right. And Nick Lacari was their one, probably their best player. And they had him out on the point on the boards, but he, he broke his wrist and he had a cast on. And the puck comes around the boards, and it got past him because his hand wasn't. Yeah. And this Cloquet kid raced up and got the puck and came in all alone, missed the shot, but the puck was still going forward and went right through the five hole of the goalie. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. I think it was one nothing or 2-1. Okay, so 15-1. and one. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you like Mike Randolph's chances. Just because of yeah. he's been there before, sure. he knows, and then, hey, I don't think there's a better coach in high school hockey in Minnesota. Oh, I agree, but you got to believe that there's a bullseye on East yep. back, and Grand Rapids wants to. But here, look here at and they want to spoil a party. Look at Grand Rapids now. <laughs> they got uh, <laughs> they got a new coach, Trent Klatt. Yep, he was the head of scouting for New York Islanders. He was he was a big shot with the Islanders, and he played pro hockey. He was he, he a gopher? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And um, it's kind of funny. This Scott uh, Jernander was another pro player from the range. Sure. That's Bob Jernander's kid. Well, they, these two guys married twin sisters. <laughs> and that's how he got up to, that's where he lives up in the range. And that's how he wanted, he says, I never got to the state tournament. I want to feel the excitement. It has to be the most exciting feeling in the world to go to state. Interesting. They want to bring Grand Rapids there so bad. <laughs> well, we're Duluth-based, and we uh, pull for the Duluth boys, and uh, good luck to both teams, though. And, uh, yeah, so that's great. And I'll tell you what, I know a lot of people already called me up. They're coming up to Duluth for this game. So that's Class double A. We got Class A. Yeah. Okay. Number 1A, Northfield, Mankato West. Northfield, I'd like to see them. They haven't been there in a long, long time. In 2A, they're still doing their semis. And I think that probably one of the only teams that really can beat Hermantown is still in their Breck, the number one seed. They played Blake on Tuesday night, tomorrow night, and then they, Delano and Orono play uh, that same night. So I hope Breck makes it, and I hope they get the chance to play them in the uh, Finals, because they'll probably be, Hermantown and Breck will be the one, two seeds in the state tournament. They both make it. Breck makes it. Oh, and here's your 3A, your number one team, Laverne. They rolled over New they, Ulm, I think 10 nothing. They got a big game with Litchfield, Daisal, and Col 
Kokato. Kokato, yeah. <laughs> kind of like Mankato. Yeah. And they play on Wednesday night for the finals to go to state. Go Laverne. Yeah. They got the highest score in, ho in ho high school hockey history. Uh, that sophomore, Jason uh, Jackson, J-A-X. Really? Nelson. He's the highest scoring player. Now, who was previous? Was that Joey Benick? Um, Benick. Uh, or was that just? Or Johnny Paul. I don't know okay. which two. Huh. It might have been Benick. Okay, and Spihar was up there. Sure. Okay, and then number four, they're in their semi still. 4A, Montemita and Tortino Grace. Montemita's the number one seed. And St. Paul Academy is having a good year. They're the number two seed against the South St. Paul. And I think it's going to be Montemita and St. Paul Academy on Friday night for their finals over. And they'll play at Roseville on Friday night. Okay, number 5A, Princeton and Monticello. They'll play up, up in Isani Arena on Thursday night. Number 6A, hey, Little Falls upset, a big upset in Class A, St. Cloud Apollo. I think St. Cloud Apollo only lost two games. It might have been three. And big mm. upset. All right. And, and St. Cloud Apollo's goalie was, uh, he's up with the Frank Brinzik Award with River A. Lander from Duluth Denfield. So that was a big upset. And they'll play St. Cloud Cathedral on Thursday night. And then Hermantown and Hibbing. So <laughs> I tell you, they played each other just a couple weeks ago. And Hermantown won seven nothing, but the teams are closer than that. Yeah, they're not. It's not going to be a seven nothing. I don't see it, but Hermantown will be big favorites. All right, so and that game is Wednesday night at Amsoil at seven o'clock. All right. So then the number eight A is a classic game for up in the northwest side of the state. Thief River Falls, number one seed against East Grand Forks. The last two years won the state tournament. Yeah. Class A, and so they're coming. Up, they're starting to play a lot better now. I know they had some injuries and in that, but who knows? Both of those teams will be good representatives at the state, and they'll play Thursday night at East Grand Forks Civic Center. Say, did we get a a final on the girls' high school hockey? Yes, on uh, Class A, Blake, which has been one of the best teams in the state, and Breck and the girls in the Class A. Well, Blake beat St. Paul United 8-0. And then uh, Eden Prairie in overtime beat uh, Maple Grove 3-2. Um, and one thing I'll say, I was down there for about six games. The goaltender and these girls, I thought some of these guys, boys, boys teams should pick up some of these girls. I mean, mm. these girls were well, I know hot. That, I know that third place game, War Road beat Proctor Hermantown 3-1. to one. Uh, There is a state girls... Stars of the North Girls High School Hockey All-Star Game, kind of on the heels of the All-Star right. Boys game. And I believe this is the first annual uh, K-1 Sports, uh, Stars of the North Girls High School Hockey All-Star Games. Uh, four teams, two games, 68 of the best players in northern Minnesota, February 23rd, that's Tuesday, February 23rd, at the Cloquet Area Recreational Center. Uh, they're going to have a Futures game at 5 and then the All-Star game at 7. So Tuesday, February 23rd, the girls get their All-Star All game up in, in uh, Cloquet, rather. And that's exciting. Yeah. I think that's great. Uh, Bulldogs this weekend at St. Cloud. Best luck to the Bulldogs. Uh, Scholastica. Scholastica had tough losses against Adrian. They'll have a Wednesday playoff game, 7 o'clock, Lawrence at St. Scholastica. And that about does it, Jared. Yeah, so get out there for boys' section uh, playoff finals in the cities. Or if you're up here, come to Amsoil Wednesday and Thursday night. Great games. Well, with that, we're going to have to uh, bid adieu until next week. We'll be back here next week to drop the puck, and we'll see you then.